Hi all, Lee Veris here with another Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be bringing you another video exploring photo techniques, equipment, software, creativity, travel, and more. Today I'm going to revisit the point color tool in Lightroom and examine another use scenario, this time with a landscape image. Along the way, I'll go through a complete post-process enhancement in Lightroom. Okay, let's begin. So we're going to look at uh, point color and the use uh, using it to expand color contrast in areas of very similar color. So um, we start by reducing the highlights and opening up the shadows using the highlights and shadow sliders. And that, in effect, is going to reduce the contrast in the image. But then we're going to add contrast back uh, using the presence sliders. So um, we're going to target then a, a subtle color variation using the point color tool. And we're going to expand the color contrast in this area by pushing one color one way and the other color the other way. So we're going to push the hue and luminance to uh, create our expanded color contrast. And to set it all off, uh, to finish it, we're going to use the white adjustment, the white point adjustment, and push that slider to uh, build a full range into the image. All right, let's take a look. OK, here we are in Lightroom. And uh, here's the image I want to work on. Uh, and this is a this is actually a JPEG. It's not a raw file. This is the JPEG straight out of the camera. I like to set up my uh, Fuji XT5 with uh, uh, JPEG plus raw, and um, the JPEG setting is uh, uh, Velvia, which is the most saturated uh, rendering. And I'm also tweaking the the settings for the JPEG to give me the flattest rendering. So. Uh, I've reduced the highlight strength uh, and increased the shadows so we uh, can see into the shadows and see detail in the highlights. And this way, when I'm viewing through the mirrorless camera, I'm seeing uh, as much detail as I possibly can. And that way, if I, if I notice that I'm clipping detail in the highlights, I know that I'm really overexposed and I can make my... Uh, adjustments accordingly. So in this case, I've got a, a, a really pretty decent exposure. I've got detail in the highlights, which is represented by the sky, and then plenty of detail in the shadows, which is in the foreground area here. However, uh, we're going to start processing here using the basic panel. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is, is perhaps a little counterintuitive, because I know ultimately what I want to do here is add some contrast really kind of pump the drama back into this image. Um, so I'm going to actually counterintuitively reduce the highlights again, bring, bring that down and actually have a little bit more detail in the highlights. And I'm going to open up the shadows. So I'm going to bring this shadow slider up all the way. And that, again, opens up uh, the, the shadow detail and flattens the overall contrast. But it, it's doing it from the ends instead of using the contrast slider, which would uh, decrease the contrast starting with the middle of the histogram. You know, if you do this, it kind of really flattens things out. I'm not doing that. I'm leaving, uh, I'm bringing the highlights down and opening up the shadows. Uh, now I want to add contrast, but the way I'm going to do it is using the presence sliders here. So we'll, we'll first start by just adding clarity all the way. Um, and that's, that's increased the contrast here in the foreground a bit. Uh, I can add a little bit of sort of edge uh, sharpness using the texture slider, and that's going to kind of increase the impression of sharpness and all the fine details down in here, the texture of the grass and whatever. Now I'm going to use the dehaze slider to really start putting the contrast back in, and that, that starts adding contrast in the sky faster than it does uh, anywhere else. Actually, it's kind of adding some contrast to the distant mountains here. And it adds contrast in an interesting way that preserves uh, detail in the shadows here. So I'm actually getting more detail in the shadows. Uh, and I've, I've increased the weight of the sky. I'm getting perhaps a little bit of a yellowish tinge in the sky. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to visually modify my color temperature, push 
push the slider towards blue um, and until I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. Also, it's cooling off the color of the grass, which I kind of like. Uh, okay, so next step, I want to add even more contrast, but I'm going to do this in a, in a different way. Um, we're going to actually start using the point color tool. And I want to increase the difference between these highlight areas of the green and the sort of, I don't know, richer mid-tone areas of the green. So we're going to go into our color mixer panel and we're going to look at point color. I'm going to target that highlight point color with the eyedropper tool here. So I'm moving into this highlight area and I found a nice area that I want to target. So I click on that. Now I have my targeted area and I'm going to reduce the range entirely. So I take that range down to zero and let's just see uh, what I've done uh, by visualizing the range here. I'm going to check this visualize range checkbox and now everything except the targeted color has been grayed down and I can I can further constrain this by looking at the reveal triangle here next to the range slider, to the right of the range slider. We'll just open that up. And now I've got uh, further refinement I can do to the hue range, the saturation range, and the luminance range. Okay, so our hue range, this color was a little less green than that color. I'm gonna move my sort of color target box uh, down so that less of the green, uh, the greener color is targeted. I'm going to move my, let's see, I'll move my luminance range box up right to the edge. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to place this little dot, which rep represents that specific targeted color right at the edge. So it falls off into the darker range. Now that, that tone was a little bit darker. I can further constrain this by pulling this part of the darkness range, the luminance range in. That's going to hopefully remove a little bit more of, of the, you know, I'm, I'm graying out a little bit more of the green color. Uh, same thing here. Um, I suspect that the the saturation range of the lighter uh, green is is less saturated than the darker green, so I'm going to move that box to the edge there. And uh, you can already see now I'm, get, I'm pulling a little bit more of that darker green color away from the highlight green. Now ultimately what I want to do is I'm going to shift this highlight a little more towards the yellow side. So I'm going to pull it over into the yellow area. You can see where the dot is. It's sort of right in the middle of the transition from green to yellow. So I want to push that hue just a little bit more into the yellow area. And you can kind of see as I move the slider, that little bubble moves over squarely into the yellow area. And I'm going to shift the luminance. I'm going to, I'm going to move that up. So I'm making that highlight area a little bit brighter. Now, I, I'd like to see it in context. Right now I've desaturated all the non-targeted colors. Let's uncheck this and take a look. So I can kind of see that I'm already um, brightening this up relative to that other green. Now let's target that other green. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the top of the color mixer panel, pick up my eyedropper again, and this time I'm going to click squarely, squarely in that darker green area. And there's my targeted color now. Um, I'm going to move again my range to all the way down. And we're going to refine that with the hue, saturation, and luminance boxes here. So I'm going to move that towards that green hue. And I'm going to move uh, my saturation as well. I'm going to target that more saturated green. I'm going to visualize this and I'm going to um, 
pull off more of the unsaturated green. Uh, maybe pull this little luminous range box over and remove some of the higher, brighter luminance areas from the selection as well. All right, so now that I've, I, I know that I've, I'm fully targeting that darker green, let me just uncheck that visualize checkbox. And now I'm going to shift the hue of this green a little more towards the sort of bluish green. Just a little bit. And let's back up now. Take a look at what's going on. Um, I'm going to go ahead actually and, and increase the luminance of this as well. Just a little bit, maybe move that hue a little bit more towards the sort of bluish green. Okay, now let's go back to our basic panel. Um, oops, that's the mask panel. Let's go back to our basic here. And maybe I can see, you know, I'm not really pinging any highlights up here. Let's, let's use that white slider and really kind of open this up a little bit. I'm, I'm clipping now in the blue channel a little bit, which is this bright blue color back here. I don't mind that. Um, let's bring this up just a little bit more. And that's, that's all now starting to really come together, right? So um, let's take a look at my, go back to my beginning point in my history here. So there's, there's the original, and I'm going to move off, and there's where I finally managed to come. So the takeaway here is that uh, you can use this point color tool in, an, in unusual ways, and very often I'm looking for these, these areas of green, and I'm trying to get the highlights to go a little more yellow and brighter, and uh, the shadows to go a little bluer and cooler, and that expands the color contrast in that local area, and it seems to put kind of more detail and more interest in this area, which is working well for this particular image. So I, I hope that uh, I hope that uh, is helpful. And um, let's review. All right. So to review, we're expanding our color contrast by reducing the highlights and opening the shadows. Uh, so our first move actually reduces the contrast. And then we're going to put the contrast back in with the texture clarity and dehaze sliders, all part of that presence area in the basic panel. And then we're going to target subtle color variations with the point color tool. And the idea here is that we're going to push that those color variations further uh, by pushing the hue and the luminance to expand the color contrast. And finally, we use the white point adjustment to ensure maximum range in the image. All right. I hope, um, well, that's it for now. I hope this tutorial has given you some new ideas about how you can use point color in your own work. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.